Good morning, everyone. Hello, Alina. Hi. Oh, you're muted. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, is the CEO joining too? Yes, yes. Okay. Just just one uh, one minute, please. How are you doing? I'm good. What about you? Oh, great. I'm checking my microphone. Everything is working? Yes, everything is good. Mm -hmm. And have you received my uh, presentation also? Yes, I did. I did. Um, right now, we um, make you a co-host so you can share. Uh, before, we couldn't uh, figure out how to do it, but now we figured it out. If you want to share, you can share it as well. But if you want me to share, I can share it for you too. Okay. Okay, great. Hello, Mr. Muhammad. <laughs> okay, so um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of our Knowledge Fishing Online Talk Show. Uh, my name is Con Ling. You can call me Ling, and I will be your moderator throughout this session. But today, we have two interesting guest speakers and from two different countries to talk about tourism. Um, here we have Ms. Alina, who is a director and brand strategist from Let's Go Maldives, which is one of the best and award-winning DMC in the Maldives. And Ms. Titi Kamon, a Ritsu Maikan, Asia Pacific University graduate from Thailand. Um, since our topic today is related to tourism, uh, we're definitely going to learn about how Maldives and Thailand dealt with it during the pandemic, as well as the overall knowledge of the tourism industry. So stay tuned until the end to figure out the interesting knowledge that our guest speaker will be sharing with us today. Hello again, Ms. Alina and Ms. Titikamon uh, and Mr. Mohammed. Welcome and thank you so much for joining with us today. Thank you so much, Link, for inviting us. Um, now, I would like to start by asking uh, each of you, how is the tourism, tourism industry in your country right now? Uh, whoever wants to start can start to answer first. Thailand or Maldives? <laughs> um, maybe Maldives can start first. Um, thank you. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I would like to say that the tourism industry in the Maldives uh, is uh, great. Um, even uh, I think that uh, uh, everything that is happening in the world uh, related to pandemic um, didn't really at the moment affect uh, tourism in the Maldives uh, because uh, we, we are hitting the records on the monthly arrivals. And uh, it is really interesting to see. And I think that um, in a way that the Maldives is a very unique destination because of the isolation of the islands here in this country, this all just um, um, added uh, a certain um, advantages uh, um, considering the pandemic. So if we're talking about uh, a country with uh, almost 1,200 islands, uh, where each resort is an isolated, separate island, that is exactly where people want to go when we are talking about the um, uh, isolation, when we are talking about the safe place, when we are talking about the place where people uh, can be sure that you know the virus cannot be spread. So this is why the Maldives uh, became, um, already had a, an award of the safest destination on the, on the, of the world. And um, it's just, I can just really say that we have been blessed with this natural isolation in this country. 
and the arrival is uh, arrival to the Maldives uh, from the tourists around the world is really hitting all the records. So we are very happy and that this was happening in our country right now. But I also would like to uh, give a word to our CEO, Mr. Mohamed Riaz, who can add a little bit more about it. Hello, everybody. Can you hear? Everybody can hear, eh? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Okay, um, I'm a little bit late. I uh, couldn't catch up. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't uh, hear what you have been discussing before. But I will add something to uh, Alena's uh, uh, speech. Uh, of course, Maldives is blessed uh, because we are so isolated. Uh, so for us, uh, honestly kind of a blessing because we are having the num uh, highest uh, number of arrivals uh, or the occupancy very high and also spreading COVID to the tourists is very minimized because uh, on arrival uh, we are checking and then uh, you should have a PCR test before you come to the Maldives and then uh, they are going to an isolated island where all the staff they are already vaccinated and they are living in the island. So there is no way that uh, they can mingle with others. So it's kind of very safe destination. And again, you know, we are in the Asia, uh, what I believe is uh, with the climate, what we have in, in Asia, actually uh, COVID situation will be better. You know, it's not like that dangerous in the winter zone where, you know, there will be uh, much uh, worse cases. So, uh, we should say that uh, COVID situation is not an easy thing. It's uh, difficult, but for the Maldives, of course, uh, people have to do more work. People have to be more careful. We have to be more taking more care of the visitors. But other than that, uh, if we talk about arrival, of course, uh, we have very good high arrival. Maybe because we are the only country in Asia open, you know, but and also it's very safe. Thank you. And uh, I also just want to give a little bit of the figures, for example, if you're talking about the month of December uh, 2021, then the uh, average uh, daily arrivals to the Maldives was 5,300 people, with the maximum arrived on the single uh, day uh, with a 7,000. So the figures are really great. And uh, the Maldives proved that it is the safest destination in the world. And it is the most attractive destination in the world because again of the isolation and because of the great weather. So it's kind of like a uh, literally the best place where you can be during the pandemic because of the um, hot temperature and you know the, the, the sun and the beautiful beach and also the beautiful ocean uh, transparent water uh, so uh, it's, it's really healthy you know i think that even when you're swimming in the beautiful uh, ocean uh, we can't think of any disease uh, coming to us because uh, it's like we are um, making a certain um, things for our health which is helping us even more uh, being healthy eating fresh fruits you know relaxing and uh, that is everything uh, the best what can be only possible done just to uh, be in this place during the pandemic and not to be worried about uh, any virus or anything like this. Yes, <laughs> this makes me want to go to Maldives right away. Yeah. <laughs> you should come. <laughs> yeah, I'm planning to come now. <laughs> um, thank you so much for sharing this um, insightful information. Now may I ask um, Ms. Titi Kamon to share about Thailand? Okay. Um, first of all, I have to say like uh, Maldive, Maldives way of um, dealing with pandemic and travelers as a whole is interesting because um, you have like the isolated route just for travelers and you, you don't mix them with like a normal citizens but um, in Thailand we are a little bit scared of tourists or visitors because um, of the Omicron and like uh, we were scared that all shops will be closed again right now we open for um, applicants for the test and go program uh, 
so a little bit of travelers flew into Thailand starting from November, but mm-hmm. compared to the number before the pandemic is like quite a drop. So right now, I think the status is just in an okay level, and they may might open more in February. That's what I heard. Yeah, that's what I saw too. They are planning planning to do the test and go again, right? Without yeah. the quarantine, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, may I ask when you want to share the presentation with us? Well, uh, my presentation is related to the attraction uh, of the Maldives, if uh, that is something that we are going to discuss now, that I can uh, share it uh, right away. Yeah, and one thing I want to ask is, I saw that Maldives what was open since 2020, right? Correct, uh, <laughs> since the middle of July 2020. So look, when everyone is like, a panic came because of the uh, start of because the start of the virus like motives were open so it, it just really surprised me yeah well uh, I think it's also uh, many things um, were related to I guess the certain nationalities which really wanted to go to Maldives and they didn't want to wait and you know, uh, among uh, the, the first nationalities were, uh, of course, Russians, which uh, really like to travel. And then the Maldives is uh, one of the number one destination uh, for Russia. And if you're again, if you're talking about the statistic, uh, right now the Russia is number number two market uh, to the Maldives. Uh, the only uh, India at the moment is on the first place. Then the second uh, second one is Russia. And I think also because of that, because so many people, they were really keen to go to Maldives and there was such a huge demand from the Russia, from Russia. And um, that is also a little bit of uh, uh, some, some of the things which really helped, uh, um, I, I think, you know, to just not to be afraid, you know, to open the borders and uh, people just could travel right away without waiting, but I think that is also really, really much related to the nationalities, because again, in different countries, people behavior is absolutely different. There are some people who are afraid more, you know, they, they hesitate to travel or they even hesitate to uh, invite the tourists into their country, but the other countries, they are uh, quite okay and uh, they, they really want to continue, explore, explore the world, they really want to continue, travel to those countries which they uh, love and they want to go there again and again. And I think that also, again, coming back to the natural isolation, um, in my case, in my opinion, that the best way is that when the people are coming to the Maldives after, you know, taking the PCR test and all the precautions which only can can they can do when they're already coming uh, to the Maldives, there is nothing else to be afraid of because after all, they stay in the one island; they do not go to any other places. Uh, that is why. Um, everything worked so well and it is still working and successfully uh, showing us the the record figures as i said uh, i guess that is the, the, the this is the um, secret maybe yeah <laughs> yeah so like um I, what i want to know is um, before the pandemic i what were the major attraction in maldives and thailand and did it change afterwards yeah Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, if you are talking about the major attractions uh, in the Maldives, um, I, I, I can't say that something, you know, changed significantly. Definitely no. I think that the only thing which uh, uh, we can see that, that it's different right now is mostly related to the visiting of the local island. Because before the pandemic, such as attraction like uh, visiting of the local island was always a part of, uh, 
uh, the offers uh, from every resort. So when the people are coming to the resort, they can, you know, uh, buy different uh, types of excursions and uh, things related to the diving, you know, water sport activities, different type of uh, excursions. And among them, there were always a possibility to visit a local island to see how local people are living, uh, you know, just to have that experience of being in the local island. Because as we know that the resort, uh, the life in the resort and the life in the real city of Tumaldis is very different. But right now, because of the restrictions, obviously, this is one thing which is not permitted. Other than that, the, the other things, and I would like um, here uh, to, to share my presentation and then just to show you quickly what, what Maldives can really offer is still there. So that people can do so many things uh, on the island. And um, I think uh, I, I can just um, quickly jump into my presentation and show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. So do you see my screen now? Yes, yes, we can see it. Yeah. I wanted to uh, just uh, give a quick, uh, um, again, uh, introduction of the concept of the Maldives, because uh, at the moment, the, uh, the, the traditional classical concept of the Maldives is one island, one resort. That is what we are talking about. This is exactly the isolation we are talking about. So uh, at the moment, we have like more than uh, 160 resorts like that of a different price rates, different sizes, and different uh, uh, concepts which uh, the resorts are offering to the tourists. And uh, this is why, again, when people are here, they feel safe. They know that uh, all the people who are surrounding them, they are either vaccinated or they uh, done a, a PCR test or, or a bought things. And, um, Again, uh, that's uh, giving uh, everyone a more um, the feeling of uh, being more confident. Um, I just also want to uh, specify that there is another type of the um, accommodation uh, in the Maldives, which is uh, like a local hotels or the hotels on the local islands or the guest houses, we can call them. It's also there. And at the moment, uh, uh, we are also having a, uh, this type of um, accommodation open for the tourists as well, as well as the resort. Uh, the, with the only difference that the resort is just one island and one brand on the island, but the guest houses or the city hotels is, uh, is a hotel which can be among a few other hotels on the same local island. Uh, there is also a yacht safari, which is uh, quite famous in the Maldives. And if people want to, for example, not to stay on the island, but they just like to travel from one place to another, they just can live on the yacht. And especially that's popular also among divers. We have also a, a very interesting concept of integrated resorts, as you can see here. Um, this is uh, two resorts connected with the bridge, which is a uh, Hard Rock Hotel and Sai Lagoon um, Maldives. Uh, so it's giving the opportunity to people while staying in one hotel to use, um, you know, uh, different facilities of the other hotel as well. That is a new wave of the resorts, again, um, different from what we called one island, one resort. And it's just giving also more opportunity for the, um, you know, how to spend the time in the Maldives, what to do, just a little bit more uh, space again to um, explore the surrounding. And obviously all the beautiful villas, which we have here with a classical beach villa or water villa. But apart from that, uh, Maldives is offering lots of uh, um, residences. It's a big villas with few bedrooms for a big family or for a big group of people where people can not only come for just a few days, but they can literally live there for months or two. It depends on you know, how long they would wish to stay. Uh, there are uh, even more 
interesting and uh, kind of, um, I can say, artistic type of the villas, which, for example, like a tented jungle villa or a water ret retreat with the slide. And uh, also even more exciting uh, villas, uh, such as treetop house, where the, the tourists can experience living at surrounded by the treetops, or for example, even the underwater residences, which we uh, have now in the Maldives and just really gives a, a unique opportunity to live under the water, especially when the water is so transparent in the Maldives, it's, it's really exciting. and. So many people, they are dreaming about it and when they see it somewhere on the internet, um, they are, they're so excited to see it in the reality. And of course, uh, the private islands, that is even more advanced option for the isolation, I can say. You know, if you're talking about one island, one resort, all the guests which are coming to the, um, um, you know, the resort, again, they stay in the isolated facilities. But just imagine then, that uh, just right next to the main island of the certain hotel, there is also one more small island with a few bedrooms there. And then, you know, their um, separate gym and, you know, the separate spa room and everything completely isolated. So it's just giving you even more sense of um, safety for uh, very demanding people who don't really want to even, you know, stay close to, to, to the rest of the guests of the island. So that option is also here. Again, if we're now if we are talking about the attraction, of course, uh, one of the best attractions in the Maldives that would be a Maldives fauna. And uh, people from around the world are coming to Maldives, first of all, to see that beautiful reef, the transparent, clear, beautiful water in the Maldives, and to be able to swim with uh, mantas uh, in, uh, where, uh, and then in some of the uh, places in the Maldives, you know, you can just swim with uh, um, up to 100 pieces of, of, of the mantas uh, together, or uh, with the whale shark, for example, it's really, really popular here. Then if we're talking about the, the other attraction, it would be lots of type of water sport, diving, a different type of uh, uh, excursions like uh, watching dolphin or uh, the trip to the sandbank, for example. Then we have land sports such as football, tennis, and even the golf in some of the uh, islands, which are really big. And of course, the wedding. Uh, many people uh, just are dreaming to have a beautiful wedding in the Maldives and uh, different resorts offering um, absolutely beautiful areas uh, for, again, for the wedding, like wedding pavilion, the decoration on the beach. It's very um, inspiring and um, again, like a dream come true. And of course, for those people who are traveling with children, we have an amazing kids clubs. Um, in some of the hotels, the kids club are so advanced, so big and offer so many uh, interesting things that it's uh, the, the parents, they really have a hard time to take kids back at the end of the day. <laughs> or they just really don't want to leave the island when the vacation is over. And of course, the boutiques, uh, every uh, hotel will have a boutique uh, where people can buy, uh, you know, different summer clothes, bags, hats, and souvenirs, and some, some other things. Spa, which is one of the main attractions, uh, obviously, because Maldives is all about relaxing. That's about uh, the place where you can just um, relax and wind and uh, um, spa here is a really advanced and uh, people always can choose they would like to go and visit the spa on the land or spa on the water uh, different types of yoga including classic yoga or aerial yoga or even floating yoga as you know the lagoons in the Maldives are so calm then it's literally like a pool so there are no big waves here and then the floating yoga can be one of the also a great and very relaxing attraction here 
And we also we have even more creative types of attractions, such as, for example, bubble house experience, uh, which is a one night experience where the guests can stay in a transparent bubble house. They can just uh, look at the stars and, uh, through the whole night and stay in a very unique, you know, isolated also place uh, and the beach where no guests would be disturbing them around. Or even when they want to fly under the water, and we have uh, here this type of the um, underwater submarine where people can feel like they are in the aircraft, but they're just flying through the water, especially with the transparent, beautiful water in the Maldives uh, that would give a very best experience. Stargazing, of course. Where else than not in the Maldives to watch the stars, especially that we don't have much light, you know, much uh, electricity on the island. And then in the night, you can see a beautiful stars and uh, just enjoy the whole experience here. Skydiving, even this is possible now in the Maldives. And for those people who just want to be, uh, you know, more... They just want to get more emotions, uh, to want to have a more uh, bright experience. They can do even sky, skydiving now. And of course, uh, um, the beautiful underwater restaurants. At the moment, we have uh, six underwater restaurants uh, in the Maldives. And uh, uh, this uh, six underwater restaurants uh, that is something what attracting people from different countries. And I think it's one of the must see in the Maldives, definitely. And of course, uh, if you're talking about, for example, New Year and uh, you know festive season, Christmas, the Maldives are really doing amazing, beautiful parties. Uh, just people, all the guests who are coming to the Maldives during the season, they feel uh, like they're in some kind of fairy tale so it, this gives lots of emotion very bright um very bright emotion and a great memories for the whole family and uh, that's something which also attracts people from around the world especially during the december and january different types of the special events and festival also so that is in short, which I can uh, say about Maldives, there are definitely a bit more things uh, also, if you're talking about the attraction, but I hope that <laughs> yeah. I, I tried, you know, to show you how many variation of the attraction in the Maldives um, available for the people. And that is why uh, so many people from around the world are just coming back here sometimes a few times a year and uh, um, having a great time in the Maldives. Yes, um, this is really like um, if, um, useful and insightful information. And thank you so much for sharing with us. Like I learned a lot, right? Yeah. Since um, we have limited time, now I want to highlight uh, Thailand as well. Um, so th uh, for Thailand, I understand that um, they have so many um, restrictions with the government, right? Yeah. So how are the government dealing right now with all the restrictions? Um, with all the restrictions, you mean uh, with uh, they, they uh, for tourists? Do you yes, for tourists. Tourist. Yeah, um, so as I've said before, tourists have to apply for uh, coming to Thailand for the test and go program. But before that, they have like a, the sandbox program. And the result of it was, um, well, uh, we, um, it, it came out that uh, the, one of the tourists um, got coronavirus. And so the the COVID spread again in Thailand. So the sandbox program was shut down, and then uh, they're trying again with the Chess and Go program. The tourists have to be fully vaccinated, and um, uh, after they successfully apply for the Chess and Go program, they come to Thailand, and then they have to stay in the um, tour uh, government approved hotels only. Uh, and then um, they 
do the um, PCR test. And if the result come out negative, then they can go anywhere freely in Thailand. But if um, it came out, it comes out positive, they have to um, sadly they have to stay in the hospital instead. Oh, I see. Um, since um, it's different, right, in Thailand than Maldives. Maldives is an island, so it's really isolated, and people can just travel. But in Thailand, you have like a land. Um, destination like see lands in like a city so yeah. um, with those um, in those type of city does it change um, after the COVID I mean the attraction places do they change they do change significantly because um, they try not to have as many tourists at once right Bec before they don't really have like a restriction the number restriction but um, right now they try to have as less people in an open space or like in the crowded space at once as much as possible so um but i think that is good for uh in the situ situation we are in right now uh and um as for the tourists themselves i think they tend to go to a more um, isolated place like um hiking <coughs> hiking in the north of Thailand or um, go to like a private island or um, try to be isolated as much as they can. Uh, I see. Uh, what about the Phuket sandbox? I, I think it's similar to Maldives, right? Yeah. The plan is to isolate people from the city. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, I don't know much about the sandbox program, but I, I think I heard that. Um, well, uh, they're not that strict in the beginning, so that's why um, uh, the COVID started to spread from there. So uh, I think that's um, like an important. A lesson that they learned from the sandbox program and then they try to improve more in the test and go program that they're using now see. so um, another thing I want to ask is did your government like try to attract more travelers with the giving situation given situation do they like help in any uh, or provide any support to the think, yeah, yeah local I think, um uh, to the local oh yes um we have as for the locals we have uh um i don't know how to say in english because uh the program name is in thai but mm. it translates like um um let's go to let's go to travel or something like that uh mm. they give thai people a discount like half a price discount to a major uh, hotels like the five-star hotel you can get uh, a half a price for staying there like a night or uh, two nights uh, so that increase the number of local tourists significantly I think mm -hmm. everyone wants to wants to uh, experience like a five-star hotel you know, and, and then go to travel everywhere. Uh, they can use that um, program for like a half a price of food. So I think, yeah, that also um, helps a lot. But as for tourists, um, I'm not sure about uh, the half a price situation. I don't think they get the same at all <laughs> and they still have to uh, pay the full price but um uh uh i think thailand's trying to find a way to uh increase the number of international tourists at the moment so um maybe they'll come up with like uh, uh interesting ideas in the future uh, is it um still affordable for the common tourists to visit both Maldives and Thailand? Um, 
for Thailand, uh, I think it's uh, affordable for normal people as my friend from Japan who is Vietnamese just uh, came to visit me yesterday. He passed the test and go program. So I think um, anyone, anyone as, as long as they apply for the program, they can get accepted. Uh, question for the Maldives. Yeah. Uh, regarding the affordable tourism. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Yas, would you like to add a few words about the affordable tourism in the Maldives? Yes, yes. Thank you, uh, Alina. Uh, well, you know, Maldives government came with a plan as uh, Alina has described on the presentation that the local islands can have small hotels or guest houses where they are really cheap. People don't even believe it on that because there are uh, hotels for the price of, let's say, $60 per person, uh, per two person. You know, this is uh, almost uh, same in Thailand and all over in Asia. So it's it's kind of uh, affordable now because uh, what happened was in the Maldives, everybody believed in that Maldives is so expensive. So they didn't, just don't want to see into the Maldives. You know, they just want to think about it well it, it's of course affordable now uh, people can enjoy the same environment uh, of course there will be different changes i see in thailand also there are expensive hotels and cheap hotels yes uh what i see is you know only a kind of a fear you know it's depending on the government uh the health department you know what happened in the mall is, is that because we have very small population you know so uh, in normally, normally in general, uh, the hospitals or the health facilities are designed not for, you know, high number of people. So big countries are so much more careful that I have to be more careful because in the Maldives, it's like we have a, a population of, let's say, 500,000 uh, maximum. So uh, the government just believe that if something happens, there will be enough facilities for everybody, plus the uh, tourists. So uh, that's the difference, you know. So uh, what Maldives took to towns, you know, and then uh, it became uh, it became good. Uh, our population uh, vaccinated, and people are uh, people have done PCR tests before they leave. So there shouldn't be uh, much problem because they are only going by aircraft. The aircraft also check the PCR test, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, it's affordable now, <laughs> very much affordable. Yeah. <laughs> so um, based on your perspective, which which sectors are the most affected because of the pandemic? For example, like is it the hotel, the airline, the travel agent, or the locals who relies on the tourism? For the for the Maldives, of course, uh, tourism. We depend on tourism, you know. So kind of our blood is tourism. So if no tourist, we will not survive. So. so uh, for us, of course, all the hotels, yes, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's very much, uh, yeah. And it goes to all the economy. So Maldives will be more well, vulnerable than any, any other country because we don't have a, a other much national uh, uh, resources other than, you know, fishing. Um, so uh, if you, for the question, I think uh, all the airlines, you know, a lot of airlines got bankrupted because if they don't fly, they will not sustain. So, uh, so the mall is, of course, if there's no tourist, we will not, not get for it. So, we will not have, uh, you know, uh, natural resources. So that's, that's the thing. So I guess uh, it, it's equally, uh, equally affected, you know, the airlines and then the... Oh, oh I see. Uh, what about Thailand? <laughs> who do you think got, uh, yeah, who, which sectors are the most affected? <laughs> I think, in my opinion, they, they're, um, at first I thought they're both affected, right? But then I, I think again, there are a lot more hotels than there are airlines. 
in Thailand. So um, I think for the small hotels, the the small guest house, the smaller business, um, they are the most effective because um, they are not government approved. Tourists cannot stay in the smaller hotels, and they have to depend on the locals. And the locals they have their house. And they don't want to stay in hotels for a long time. And if they want to stay in a hotel, they would rather stay in like government-approved hotel. So, in the end, I think the small people affected the most. Most, uh, I see. Um, yeah. So um, our time is almost uh, over. Uh, one last question. Uh, one last question from me. Uh, that is like. Um, do you think that uh, we all? Uh, what do you think we all can do to get the tourism industry back on track? Um, as for the Maldives, I think that everything is done, <laughs> and I and I, I do I do believe that the the tourism is really back on track uh, quite <clears throat> successfully in the Maldives. I think the government did everything they could in the best way to make sure that there are no, you know, uh, very, that there are no uh, big restrictions or uh, complicated rules for the tourists to enter the country. And that is why everything is successfully working. You know, the resorts were full during festive. And then within the year, and even right now, after the festival is over, it's also, um, it's really hard to find the availability now. So in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, um, everything is working really good. And um, I think that just, uh, just the country has to go on, you know, with what they already started. And um, um, you know, we, are, we welcome the people from all, all over the world. The visa, again, is free for, for all the nationalities. You only need a PCR test uh, with, with you with a negative result, obviously. And you can freely travel to Maldives to mm -hmm. any place uh, you want. Yeah. Uh, would, uh, Mr. Yas, would you like to add anything else? I think, uh, yes, in general, you know, tourists are coming for relaxing, right? So they don't want to have you know extra high deck. So uh, when they when they design uh, inviting when you're inviting tourists to a country, you should always think that tourists have to be very much you know easy to go. So that's what we have to think. I mean, I think in Thailand also you have to think about it. Uh, that tourists don't want to stay in hotel even for one night, and then they are not they are not happy to chest again. You know so. When, when the governments can design the whole thing, like tourists have to be very much free, okay? Thinking the minor precaution, minor precautions, I think that will work. That's what uh, I think by the 92 hours, 92 hours PCR. Mm -hmm. So 92 hours, which is four days. So we have a lot of time on there. And then we also be that if, Tourists is coming, let's say, uh, yeah, and they will check, yes? So they will check on boarding the, uh, the passenger. So everybody on the aircraft is uh, safe. So they are just flying, and then within a couple of hours, they are landing to the airport, and then they are going to the uh, isolated hotel or isolated uh, facilities, you know. Uh, uh, so I think uh, that uh, the government, if they open it more, of course, taking the minor precaution will work. So, yeah. so in the Maldives, um, I think, as, as, as I say, um, the things were done perfectly here. Everything uh, just to ease the, the entry uh, requirements for the tourists were done. 
in the perfect way. And this is why the tourism is so successful. Now that is why the, the resorts are full. And this is why the people from all over the world are coming back for a few, uh, few times again and again within one year to Maldives because they know that here it's easy to enter. Here is this, they, they will have a great time and here they will be safe and they don't have to you know, have any worries. Yes, I see. Uh, what about Thailand? What do you think we can do or Thai people can do for the tourism industry to get back on track? I think I agree that um, there's only moving forward now and there's no stopping because uh, uh, we're going to live with um, this situation for quite a long time, in my opinion, and we have to uh, be get used to it and um, get vaccinated as soon as possible when it's available for you and then once everyone's fully vaccinated i think they uh, they can um come down and then uh um uh live with i uh, the situation we're in right now and try to improve um what has to be improved uh yeah do you also think that um they should like ease the restriction more so that people can easily come in yeah but uh once they um everyone's fully vaccinated they can try to ease more and more and more as time goes on okay so right now i our time's up and we're a bit eight minutes over but it's okay um, because I got a lot of um, useful and knowledgeable information from both of you about the Maldives and Thailand and I would like to express my gratitude for sharing your extensive knowledge uh, on the tourism sectors and for your time. Thank you so much Thank guys. You so much. Thank you very much Ling for inviting us. Um, we are glad to participate in this event. Thank you so much for inviting us. Um, I'm glad I can hear a lot of insightful information from like the Maldives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Same think, like, for yeah. us. Yeah. Same for yeah. us. Yes. I think we learn a lot about um, uh, the other country, about yeah. Thailand. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all can take example from Maldives because they are very successful no matter what, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. So much, guys. Thank, Thank you for joining. Bye-bye.